Okay, so in section 9.3, we're going to look at integrating the trigonometric functions. So you guys know the derivatives of each of the six trig functions. So we're going to use this um, to help us begin integrating trig functions. So this is the list of integrals that follow directly from the derivatives of the six trig functions. So I'm going to expect that you guys know these integrals, um, like the integral of cosine is equal to sine plus c, uh, because the derivative of sine of x plus c would be cosine. Um, the integral of sine would be negative cosine of x plus c, because the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so that means the derivative of negative cosine would be positive sine. Um, and so on. So you guys are going to be expected to know these integrals, um, but you guys already know the derivatives of the six trig function, so it, it should be pretty easy to, to go the reverse way. But notice that in this list of integrals, we do not have four of the trig functions. So we have the integral of cosine and the integral of sine, um, but we're missing the integral of tangent, cotangent, uh, cosecant and secant. I will give you what these integrals are um, for the test, but I am going to show you guys how to derive them because it's just good practice with integrating too. So to find the integral of tangent, We use um, an identity for tangent, so we're going to rewrite tangent as sine of x over cosine x. Now we can't integrate sine um, over cosine uh, just using any of the basic rules. Uh, we do know the integral of sine and we do know the integral of cosine, but there's no sort of quotient rule. So we're left having to use u substitution and we're going to actually let u equal to the denominator, so equal to cosine of x. So when we take the derivative of u with respect to x, uh, the derivative of cosine is, remember, negative sine. And then when we solve for dx, we'll have du over negative sine. So then we can rewrite our integral as we still have the sine of x in the numerator over u, and then du over negative sine of x. So we can see that sine in the numerator here will cancel with the sine in the denominator. And we can pull a negative 1 out front of the integral. So we'll be taking the integral of 1 over u du. And you guys know the integral of 1 over u is natural log of absolute value of u. Um, and because it's times negative 1, put the negative out front. And then our last step is just to substitute what we let u equal to back into. So negative natural log of absolute value of cosine of x plus c. So the integral of tangent with respect to x is negative ln of absolute value of cosine of x plus c. Okay, we're going to find the integral of uh, cotangent in a similar way. So we can rewrite cotangent as cosine over sine. And again, using u substitution, we're going to let u equal to the denominator. So du over dx is equal to cosine. The derivative of sine is cosine. So dx will be equal to du over cosine of x. 
So rewriting the integral, we still have cosine in the numerator. And then du over cosine. The cosines will cancel. And we'll just have the integral of 1 over u du. Which is ln of absolute value of u plus c. And we can substitute sine back in for u. So the integral of cotangent is natural log of absolute value of sine of x plus c. Cosecant and I think that cotangent and tangent are pretty easy to derive. Um, cosecant isn't and secant aren't as obvious. Um, the reason that is is because to integrate, we're going to actually have to multiply by a version of 1, kind of a complicated version of 1, uh, cosecant of x plus cotangent of x over itself. And we can distribute cosecant in to the numerator. So the integral is cosecant squared plus cosecant getting my x's, times cotangent. Over cosecant of x plus cotangent of x. So again, we're going to be using u substitution. I'm going to let u equal to the denominator. So du over dx, I think, okay, well, what's the derivative of cosecant? It's negative cosecant x cotangent x. And then the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. So in isolating dx, we'll have du over negative cosecant x cotangent x minus cosecant squared of x. Okay. And now for rewriting the integral, we'll have the integral of cosecant squared x plus cosecant x cotangent x over u. And then we're replacing dx. Now, it's important to recognize that the numerator looks very similar to what is under du. It's just different signs. So I'm going to actually, in writing, um, in writing, uh, or in replacing dx, I'm going to write this as du over, I'm going to factor a negative 1 out of the denominator so that I have cosecant x times cotangent of x plus cosecant squared x. So now the numerator can cancel with the denominator there. And I can pull negative 1 out front of the integral of 1 over u du. That's easy to integrate. We'll have negative natural log of absolute value of u plus c. And then we just need to substitute what we let u equal to back in. So the integral of cosecant of x is negative ln of absolute value of cosecant of x plus cotangent of x 
plus c. Okay, and we can derive secant in a similar way. Um, I'm not actually going to derive this one all the way. It's, it's very similar to for cosecant. Only I'll get you started. Uh, we would do the integral of secant of x, and we would multiply by secant of x plus tangent of x over itself. So that integral will be secant squared plus tan well, plus secant times tangent over secant of x plus tangent. And then you let u equal to the denominator, take the derivative. So follow this same process, and we end up with the integral of secant being equal to the natural log of absolute value secant of x plus tangent of x plus c. So again, all four of those, uh, the integral, uh, integrals of all four of those functions, I will give you guys a cheat sheet for. Okay, so looking at evaluating some other integrals. Um, well, you know the integral of sine, but the thing is, whenever the argument has something happening to it, uh, whenever it's not just x, then we're going to need to, we can't just use the fact that the integral of sine is negative cosine. So we have to do u substitution. So we're going to let u equal to 2x. d over dx is 2. So that means uh, dx will be equal to du over 2. So we'll have sine of u and then du over 2. And I can, because there's no x's left, uh, we can actually just pull the 1 half out front of the integral of sine of u. So since the integral of sine is negative cosine, we'll have negative 1 half times cosine of u plus c. And then last step is just to substitute the 2x back in for u. Okay. Um, to integrate cotangent of 2x plus 3, we're going to let u equal to 2x plus 3. So du over dx is 2. Uh, du over 2 is equal to dx. So well, the integral of cotangent of u, du over 2. And again, we can just pull that one half out front of the integral. So the integral of cotangent, remember we just um, derived, is the natural log of sine, or I'm sorry, the natural log of the absolute value of sine of x plus c. Uh, so we'll have one half times natural log of absolute value of sine of u plus c, and then we just need to finish substituting back in. So sine of 2x plus 3. 
Okay, so all these we've been laying the arguments uh, equal to u. So we're going to do that again. So d over dx is again 2. Uh, du over 2 equals to dx. So the integral of cosecant of u times cotangent of u, du over 2, can pull that one half out front again. Okay, and it'll be one half times the integral. Uh, well, the integral of cosecant times cotangent is actually negative cosecant. So we'll have negative one half cosecant of u plus c. And then substituting 2x back in plus c. Remember, you can always check that you have integrated correctly by taking the derivative. Okay, this one, um, well, it's not tricky. There's just kind of different ways you can look at it. Um, so let's let u equal to e to the x. So du over dx is e to the x then. So you'll have du over e to the x equals to dx. Um, actually, let me skip a step. Or go back a step, actually. So du actually equals to e to the x dx. Now, if you notice this, if we were to rewrite the integral by the commutative property of multiplication, I could flip the factors here. Okay, so to rewrite the function like that. So u is e to the x. But notice then that e to the x dx is du. So we can actually go directly to our substitution here. Now if you didn't see that and you still solved for dx, you would get du over e to the x equals to dx. But you have to remember that you let u equal to e to the x. So this is actually du over u. So if you were to substitute that in for dx, then the u that um, was in front of the cosecant squared, right? you would have the integral of u co times cosecant squared of u and then that's the argument, so du over u, this u would cancel with this u. Okay, so the integral of cosecant squared um, is negative cotangent and substituting back in You have negative cotangent of e to the x plus c. I'm going to let u equal to 1 over x, which can be written as x to the negative first because I want to be able to take, use power rule in taking the derivative. Okay. Um, and that, so negative x to the negative second power is the same as negative 1 over x squared. So negative x squared times du is equal to dx. So now for rewriting the integral, we'll have the integral of sine of u over x squared. And it's times negative x squared du. So that x squared will cancel with the x squared in the denominator. Move this over a little. So it's the integral. I'm going to actually leave this as negative sine of u instead of pulling the negative out front because we know that the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So that means the integral of negative sine will just be cosine. So 
So like cosine of 1 over x plus c. Okay, so if we let u, I would let u equal to x cubed. Uh, so du over dx is 3x squared. So du over 3x squared equals to dx. Well, the integral x squared is still there times cotangent of u. And then du over 3x squared. So the x squareds can cancel. And we're able to pull one third up front of the integral. And we know that the integral of, oh, I don't like how I wrote that. In the integral of cotangent, remember, is negative ln. So, It'll be negative one-third ln of cosine of u plus c. And then I can substitute x cubed back in. this last one we get to use a trig identity. So looking at this integral, you couldn't integrate using any of the rules that you are aware of. But sine of 2x is a, there's a double angle identity. Uh, so sine of 2x is 2 times sine x cosine x. So when we rewrite sine of 2x like that, uh, we can see that the cosine in the numerator will cancel with the cosine in the denominator. We can pull that 2 out front of the integral, and we're left with sine over cosine. Well, sine over cosine is actually just tangent. And the integral of tangent is, remember, natural log of sine of x. No. Did I just blank? Did I mix them up? It is negative natural log of cosine of x. So negative 2 times natural log of absolute value of cosine of x plus c. Did I mix that up for the last one? I did. Cotangent is natural log of sine. I mixed up this one. So sorry. Let's go back and fix that. So this would actually be one third times natural log absolute value of sine of u plus c, which is one third times natural log of absolute value of sine of x cubed plus c. Sorry, you guys, I'm tired. There we go. So let me double check. Yeah. All right, let's go back and make sure that I didn't make any other mistakes. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's good. Good. Okay, we made it. 